So in the season finale of season two of Formulae videos, we're going to look at the equation of a circle. So it's not quite a line, it's a slightly different shape, but it's something that applies quite nicely to linear algebra because it gives you a different perspective on what a function is. And this isn't actually a function, it's a relationship. So let's have a look at what that actually means. First important piece of information. A circle centered on the origin has an equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared, where r is the radius of the circle. So keep that in mind before we go into some of the later concepts. We have x and y on the same side of the equation, and we can have multiple outputs for one input. So, this equation is a relationship and not a function. The reason is a function has one input and one output. A relationship can have multiple outputs for a single input. So let's think about it in terms of the vertical line test. If you run a vertical line across a function and you only have one output for one input across that entire function, then it's a function obviously. But if you run it across an a little uh, circle, for example, or some other kind of relationship, and you see that there are multiple outputs for a single input, then it is a relationship. That's a great way to clarify. It's called the vertical line test. So just try putting a vertical line through them and make sure if it's only one function. If it's more than one, then you've got a relationship. But, and here's the next part, not all circles are centered on the origin and this is why the equation is actually slightly longer. The equation involves constants a and b to offset the circle from the center, and essentially a and b offset it by a certain amount, and it's to do with the origin, but we'll get back to that in just a moment. So we have x take a squared, and that entire term is bracketed, plus y take b, with y take b bracketed, squared, equals r squared as being the key function to remember on top of the previous function. But let's just start off with a really simple question just to make sure that we can understand what's happening here. Find the equation of the circle centered on the origin with radius of three units. So we have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. If we have a radius of three units, we simply substitute the radius in as r and we get 3 squared, so x squared plus y squared equals 9 would be the relationship representing that circle on the Cartesian plane. The next one is slightly more complex and actually works off this second formula here to do with the offset, and it says find the equation for a circle for a circle that passes through the point 0, 2 and 3, 2. Okay. So when you get questions like these, these are a little bit more challenging, you want to actually have a diagram with you so you can make sense visually of what's happening. So I drew a little diagram in the corner here. I plotted the two points. They're obviously on the same line, Y line, same horizontal line. So they're opposite each other. So once I've drawn an approximate diagram, doesn't need to be a work of art, doesn't necessarily need to have the correct proportions, just so you understand where the points would be uh, in the circle, we need to actually find the midpoint. That's the next important part, the actual center of the circle. But there is one thing we can do before that, and that is determine the value of r. In this case, it's relatively straightforward to determine the value of r, because we can see it's all in a horizontal line, and we know that there's a difference of 3 in x values, right? See, we've got 3 there is x2 and 0 is x1. So we know that there, the distance between those two is simply 3, because we have 3 there and 0 there, and obviously 3 take 0 is 3. So we can determine that the radius is half of that, because the radius is half of the diameter. So we can substitute in r as being 3 on 2 as a fraction. But now, generally, you would look at the midpoint here. However, for this actual question, it's a little bit easier. So we know that, obviously, it's 3 on 2 for the radius. So we can infer that the x-coordinate of the midpoint is 3 on 2. And it's quite straightforward, because we know the midpoint 
would obviously be there. And because this is zero, and it's halfway in between, we know that the mid, the center of the circle actually has three on two as the x value there. So we substitute this three on two as a value of a, because that's how much it's offset to the right. So it's in the positive direction, but when we substitute in a into the equation, it's obviously going to be take three on two, because a is positive and it doesn't change that sign to a positive. Of course, you could use a midpoint formula that we covered in previous episodes if it's a bit harder. But in this case, we've actually got a coordinate point with zero, so it's really easy and you don't need to go through that. But just remember in the future, if it's a little bit more complex, say it's offset somewhere up here, for example, then midpoint formula is the best way to do that, to get the points to the center of the circle. So now what we also need is a y value for the center of the circle. And at uh, the center of the circle, we know that all these values lie across 2 because we can see that the y value in both those points are 2. So as a result, we can say, well, hang on, the point in the center of the circle will also lie at 2. So as a result, y equals 2, the y coord of that center is 2. And what we do is we substitute that in as being the value of b into the equation. So y take b, it's obviously going to be y take 2. Of course, you can always use the midpoint formula there, and if you couldn't work out the radius, because this wasn't a zero here, it was positioned somewhere up here, then you could always use the distance formula to find the radius as well between the midpoint. So there are ways to get around this, but just by looking at this, because the numbers work out quite nicely, you can actually infer quite a few things. So you won't always get circles like this, so it's important to know your midpoint and distance formulae, but it's really good to be able to take these sorts of shortcuts too. And as such, we get a final relation for the circle equation, and we get x take 3 on 2 squared plus y take 2 squared equals 3 on 2 squared. And that's our final equation for the equation of a circle. Thank you for watching. Join us next time. However, if you need more practice or more support, check out our apps on the App Store. They have great worked examples. They have incredible worksheets and other materials that can help you really ace exams. We have Formulae for iPhone and Formulae for iPad. Also check us out on Twitter and Facebook to keep up to date with all the educational material that's coming out. Thank you.